Okay, now into another approach. This approach, I'm going to build in that grade into the blue of the bucket. Now why again? Because remember we're trying to get the illusion of distance on a flat surface. And as we apply that distance, the local colour of the subject breaks down. Remember that distant hill shot we saw earlier. And remember what happened to the bushes and the spurs and the hills as they receded from us. There was this illusion of fog, illusion of distance, illusion of something else going on. And that something else going on is the intrusion of grey. And here, I'm going to build that grey back into the bucket again. Now I've sketched this bucket that many times I didn't need to use a pencil, I just used the brush itself this time. And you'll notice I'm going straight into the blue, and on each time I'm going to mix that blue, I'm dabbing in, I'm drawing in some of that grey. The grey from cobalt blue, and light red, and the titanium white. And you'll see I've got quite a dry mix here. It's not a real sloppy mix like I normally do. It doesn't really matter. The whole point is, whatever that mix is, as long as it works and it's dragged from the brush by the tooth of the can. Great working with titanium white, it's great working with a brush that really works with you. Remember, that brush is really an extension of my hand. What I'm seeing in front of me in terms of the bucket and how my brain is processing that information needs a tool, needs an instrument which can translate and take that information onto the canvas. And a good quality brush is important. This is a number four bristle brush and it can do almost anything. Taking a little bit of that colour with a little bit of a lighter colour over the left hand side of the bucket. Because where the light and the dark intersect, where they adjoin each other, down the front section of the bucket, that is where there's greater contrast. And as the bucket curves and rounds towards its side, that intensity dissipates. And it bleeds into and partially disappears into the surface or the adjoining area. So the bucket on the left hand side is not as intense as where the light and the dark intersect down the middle. And I'm just fashioning away around here. I'm looking for the lip of the bucket on the top, a little bit of light I can see on the bucket up there. By closing my eyes and carefully looking, I can see that little shift, that little shift in colour, in tone. I can see the shift down the side of the bucket and up from the bottom of the bucket. As I look up, it's changing again, ever so slightly. And of course, that's what we do. We need to look carefully, and then when we think we've got it just about nailed, we look again just to make sure that we have got the mix we needed to get. Just around the top of the bucket there, I can see a slight shift in the dark value. It drops down a little bit, showing that the bucket has got another side to it, showing the lip is turning on itself and creating just that small shadow, but discernible shadow. Painting's about getting all these little parts right, because once you've got the little parts right, you'll have the whole thing right. Remember now, I'm painting this bucket as if it was and is about 15 metres away. It's got to be broken down. The intensity of the blue has got to be diluted. The detail does disappear over distance. So we're not going to see a clear edge where the recess of the bucket drops in on itself. We're not going to see a clear line where the lip folds and creates a shadow. We're going to see just that small shift in tone. Where the sunlight clicks on the top of the bucket, if it was in front of me, I'd be putting on a nice yellowy, creamy highlight. But because it's further away, we're looking through more air. We're looking through more dust particles, more moisture particles in the air. And that has the effect, again, of diluting the intensity of that light, just as it dilutes the intensity of the detail and of the blue itself. So we keep looking. We keep looking. We hold the brush so that it's delicately balanced between our forefinger and our thumb. In that way, the canvas pulls the paint off. We don't have to push it. We allow the canvas just to pull it off the end of the brush. Under that recess, there's just a suggestion of a reflected colour from underneath. 
Remember in the previous exercise, we went through that, how a bucket or an object will receive a colour that may be adjacent to it. We look for that light again, and we just play with it. Remember what this was about. This was about the effect of distance on the colour and detail of an object. So distance affects the clarity, it affects the detail, it affects the intensity of colour and tone.